Hello and welcome today where I'm going to be ranking all Doctors in Doctor Who. There are a couple of Doctors out there that I'm not going to include like Peter Cushing's Doctor in the Doctor Who movies, Rowan Atkinson's in Comic Relief and Ruth Doctor and all the other Timeless Child things I can't know. That's not real, it's not canon to me so I'm not including them. Another thing that I'm not going to take into account when I'm recording this is Big Finish. Now I haven't heard any audio stories on Big Finish. I know that the 8th Doctor is apparently he's so good the Big Finish but I just haven't heard anything so I'm just going to be judging him and the 6th Doctor and any other Doctor based on the TV appearances only. The last thing I'm going to say before we get into this video is that if you aren't subscribed already I'm begging you just think about it. Th think about the, the, the money. No, 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 it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke. But, but seriously if you like this video and you're not subscribed already just, just do it. Why not? All right, the first Doctor we're going to be talking about in last place is well, it has to be Jodie Whittaker, doesn't it? And I'm going to be brutally honest. I have enjoyed watching maybe three Jodie Whittaker stories in all of her tenure. Three maximum, maybe even two. There's no stories that blow me away. There's no stories that are great. There's, there's a couple good ones, and there are so, so many awful ones. It's unbelievable. Series 11 was just nothing. I felt nothing watching it. I felt nothing watching it back. The only one I remotely had interest in was The Witchfinders because I like stuff about witches and history and all that. But there was just nothing to me that resembled old Doctor Who at all. Nothing. At the start, Series 12 looked like it was heading in the right direction as opposed to Series 11. But of course, that all ended with the timeless child nonsense. And it still hasn't been resolved, and uh, era's over, and it still hasn't been resolved. It's just there, waiting for Russell T. Davis to just clean it up. Awful. Just the worst storyline ever in Doctor Who, I think, ever. Series 13 to me is similar to Series 11 in the fact that it's just there. No one really cares. It's good that they brought some old villains back, given that Suntaran redesign. I do like, I love the skin of the Suntaran redesign. I love that they brought back the old armor. But they made it like they're addicted to chocolate. Hey, like, come on, mate. It's so stupid to watch a Suntar and just follow the doctor's orders for, for a bit of chocolate. So, so stupid. And then the two specials, I'll, I'll get on the power of the doctor in a minute, but the two specials, Eva the Daleks, I think it's called. It's decent at best, decent at best. And uh, Legend of, yeah, Legends of Sea Devils just was awful. There was nothing to it. It was just a big, boring blob for 45 minutes. So awful. I can see why it wasn't in the original Doctor Who Flux idea. Awful. Power of the Doctor, for me, was easily one of my favourite Jodie Whittaker stories. Not only because she's finally gone, but because I had loads of old Doctors back and I had the Master in, and I do love Sasha the One's Master, and I do hope that he continues playing it in the Russell T Davis era. And next one, this may surprise some people, but I've gone with William Hartnell, who was the first Doctor. And one of the key reasons why I put William Hartnell as low down as this is because it just I don't revisit his era as much as any other era in all of Doctor Who. I've seen a fair number of his episodes and they are they are intriguing, but they are just so different to what we know Doctor Who is today. It's just it's just a bit weird really to see Doctor Who as it were with William Hartnell in the lead. There is also a companion in this era that I want to point out. Dodo, I, I can't get around to liking her. She just seems like a waste of space and so pointless. I, I just had to say that, I'm sorry. I think my favourite story from this era <laughs> would have to be, I think, either the 10th planet, because Cybermen, the Cybermen are always amazing. And an Unearthly Child is, is nice, very good. Nice, calm opening. But you do get a sense of mystery through it as well. The Daleks, of course, first introduction to the Daleks, just the second story, and that is spectacular, it's amazing. Dalek Invasion of Earth as well. Dalek Invasion, you know what? Yeah, Dalek Invasion of Earth. It's just so good. William Hartnell's speech at the end of Susan when he's about to leave is amazing. I'm, I am really hoping that we get to see Susan again in the new series with the Doctor. It'd be so nice. Next on the list, I've put Colin Baker. I do think Colin Baker is better than what people give him credit for. He was written atrociously in The Twin Dilemma, and that, of course, stuck around with the audience for many months until we got Attack of the Cybermen. And even then, you know, he wasn't perfect. But I do think that season 22 is one of the most underrated seasons in Doctor Who. It's got some really good stories in, like Vengeance on Varus, Two Doctors, and Revelation of the Daleks, they are amazing. But there are also stories like Time Lash, and there are some parts of Trial of a Time North that I, I really just find boring. 
they do just drag on for a bit. But yeah, I do think Conan Baker's era in Doctor Who gets a lot more hate than it needs. It, it, it's really not that bad, especially compared to people like Jodie Whittaker. It's actually, it's actually a really, really decent tenure that he's got. Right, the next Doctor that I'm going to be talking about is the War Doctor, played by John Hurt. Now, of course, we've hardly really seen anything with the War Doctor. We've had the 50th anniversary, and that is it. Because originally, of course, the War Doctor was supposed to be Christopher Eccleston, but he didn't want to come back for personal reasons. But the performance that we got from John Hurt was absolutely... It, it was just, it was amazing. It really was. I couldn't have really asked for anything much better. It was an hour and 15 minutes. We got probably 40 minutes-ish with the War Doctor. Yeah, and it was it was really, really good. And the fact that John Hurt as well, it was John Hurt. You can't go wrong with John Hurt, really. But yeah, the only reason that he's really down as far as this is because we didn't get to see more of him. I think that's the only thing that really went wrong with his Doctor. I wish we got to see more of him. And I wish it was more planned out. Obviously, they couldn't really help that Chris didn't want to come back. But I do wish that it, it was a bit more planned out. Next up on my list is the 8th Doctor. Now, I know loads of people have a problem with the TV movie, but I actually, I actually, I'm quite a fan of it, I've got to be honest. I mean, the master being like a weird goose snake and, you know, like his eyes are all green when he takes over the guy's body is a bit weird. And Eric Roberts is definitely Mally's favourite master. And the thing where the doctor's half human on his mother's side, well, that could, <laughs> nowadays it could work with the timeless child. Oh, no, don't get me started on it. Well, now, now some, some stuff in the movie is, is quite stupid and is quite over the top. But overall, I do think the movie gets a bad rap and it is quite good. Night of the Doctor, though, is so much more superior to the movie. It's so good and it's only six minutes. It's, it just perfectly portrays what Paul McGann should have been like in the movie and he wasn't. And, and once again, I wish I got more of him on screen. I know he's on Big Finish and I haven't heard any yet. I really want to. But yeah, I do, I do wish we got to see more Paul McGann. The next incarnation on my list is the Seventh Doctor as played by Sylvester McCoy. With Sylvester McCoy, I feel like his era is very hit and miss. So Time in the Rani is probably one of, in my opinion, the worst first story ever, really. It's just, it's a bit stupid. I do like the thing with the Rani and Mel, you know, the Rani disguising as Mel, pretending to be her and, and the Doctor because he's a bit stupid after his generation. He doesn't know it. That's quite good. But... There are some awful ones as well, like Ghostlight. What is Ghostlight? There's not a word to explain, it's just... Ghostlight. Remember to the Daleks, so easily my favourite episode of the Sylvester McCoy era. It's so, so good. And Survival as well, I love the master in Survival. He gives it his old Anthony Ainley, he really does. And I, w I wish we could have seen him more. I mean, I know we saw him loads, but I really do love Anthony Ainley. I think he's so underrated as the master, he's so good. Next is Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor. One of the primary reasons that Patrick Troughton is at number 8 is because so many of his episodes are missing. I feel if we got to see more of him as the Doctor, not just as animations or as pictures or anything, but like see him, properly see him as he acted it out right then and there, it would be so, so good. It'd be so much better. It'd be one of my dreams, I think, to see Power of the Daleks especially and Patrick Troughton in. That's of course not to say that the animations aren't amazing, because they are, and they are as close as we're going to get to seeing Patrick Troughton play the Doctor for the first time, you know, for, for many, many, many years. I feel like, I, feel, I think Power of the Daleks is probably long gone at this point, so the animation is easily the best that we have. Also, I think people forget that Patrick Troughton had the hardest job of any Doctor, which was to replace William Hartnell, who was the only Doctor anyone knew at that point. The first regeneration happened, and he was there. It must, it must have honestly been so hard, and he did it, and that's why the show's here today. So I really do love his Doctor, but I obviously I just wish we could see more. The next Doctor I'm going to put on a list is Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor. The way I feel about the 12th Doctor's era is that it's really hit and miss, honestly. Series 8, I think, was a good series altogether. It had some... It, had, it did have some air eh episodes, like in the Forest of the Night. And I had some really good episodes, like Dark War and Death in Heaven for me, I do really like. And Deep Breath for me, I also really like. I know that might be a bit unpopular, but I just do like them. Series 9 for me, a bit of a step down, but overall it was alright. I loved uh, Under Lake and Before the Flood. The Dalek 2 was alright, but the bit where Davros opens his eyes, I despise so much. 
And series 10 as well, the finale for me was uh, Peter Capaldi's best finale. I really loved it. Doctor Falls and World Nothing Time was so good. I don't know why, I just, I love it. And I remember the Doctor Falls being the first ever Doctor episode that I watched live on broadcast. I didn't know who Bill was because I just finished watching series nine, but I, I, I loved it. I, I really has a special place in my heart. Plus you can really tell Peter Capaldi was a fan of the show growing up. He really gives us all into the Doctor and I can tell he loves every second of it. Next, I put the fifth Doctor. We're getting really good now. I feel like the fifth Doctor is so incredibly underrated. He's got such good stories. He's got Earthshock. He's got Caves of Androzani. He's got Resurrection of the Daleks. He's got Madrin Undead with the Brigadier. He's got the five Doctors, also with the Brigadier. And it's the 20th anniversary. So it's got all the other Doctors in as well. That, oh, it's just, it's so good. I don't know why. I think it does get a bit long with all the other strings. Because every Doctor has got its own little timeline for a little bit until you all meet up at the end. But I do like it. Also, I believe this was the first time they ever killed off a companion with that being Adric and Earthshock. And I think his death was so amazingly done. It's a shame they didn't take notice of it in Time Flight. It should have been really important, but, you know, Time Flight was just like, no, nah, no, nah, just no. Nah. Yes, I know you could argue that Peter Davison's era was the start of the downfall of Classic Who. But it was still so good and it is so criminally underrated that if you haven't seen any of his episodes, you should definitely watch them. Definitely. With all my heart, you need to see them. The next Doctor I put on this list is Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor. The 11th Doctor is an absolutely amazing Doctor. I can understand why some people might not like him as it does feel like he is childish now and again, but it's just part of the Doctor that makes him the Doctor. You always have to be a little bit childish. Now, of course, there are some bad stories in Matt Smith's tenure as well as some absolutely incredible ones. Like, for me, The Impossible Astronaut and Day of the Moon, I think, is probably one of the best season openers that we've ever had to Doctor Who. The 11th hour is absolutely phenomenal. I actually quite like The Angels Take Manhattan. I don't know why. I just actually have had quite a soft spot for it for a few years. And Day of the Doctor, I think that's absolutely spectacular. I really love Day of the Doctor so much. So yeah, all in all, Matt Smith, amazing Doctor. The youngest actor actually to play the Doctor ever, which is quite interesting. And he plays it like he's an old man in a young guy's body. It's absolutely amazing the way he plays it. Love it. In the number four spot, I put John Pertwee, the third Doctor. John Pert was the first Doctor to actually be filmed in colour and he did such a good job doing it. It felt so different and so much more up to date. And his first story to be aired from space was absolutely phenomenal. It set the tone for most of his tenure with being on unit on Earth. And it was so, it's just, I just enjoy it so much. It's so good. There are so many famous characters who get introduced during John Pertwee's tenure as the Doctor, the Brigadier, although it's technically reintroduced from Pat the Charlton, but he gets a much bigger role on this one. Joe Grant as well, I'm sure loads of people have heard of Joe Grant and I think that Joe Grant and this Doctor work so well together, easily the Third Doctor's best companion. And the Third Doctor's last companion is Sarah Jane Smith who I do think works a lot better with the Force but it's still really fun seeing John Pertwee and Elizabeth Sladen together on the screen. It's also during this period where we get introduced to the Master as played by Roger Delgado who is by far, in my opinion, the best Master ever. He plays with such a sinister tone I don't think it can ever be touched on again. Honestly, it's so, so, so good. It, it's almost flawless, honestly. So good. I do think he gets a little bit overused, but you want to see more as well. It, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Number three on my list is the ninth Doctor. Chris Eccleston was the first Doctor I ever saw, and I'm sure for loads of you watching, was the same. He brought back Doctor Who with Russell T Davis and Judy Gardner in 2005, and he was brilliant, and it was fantastic. And he gave the Doctor a whole new layer of like warrior type and he was he had PTSD he was the PTSD doctor it was basically what he was known as as he was the incarnation after the war doctor after the time war and he was led to believe that he destroyed Gallifrey the time nodes and the Daleks but you know the Daleks are never gone they always come back he didn't destroy the Daleks unfortunately for him this is when Rose gets introduced as well Rose is an absolutely amazing companion in this series she gets a lot worse I think in series two with David Tennant but she is really good in series one. Absolutely amazing. Captain Jack as well also gets introduced in here. Adam, who's as forgettable as a Brussels sprout on a Christmas dinner. Absolutely awful companion. And of course, the face of Bo gets introduced in this season as well. Absolutely amazing series. Absolutely amazing Doctor. Number three is the lowest I can go for Chris Fraxon. He's so good. He's so good. 
Now, the number two and number one spot, you can switch around and I won't argue with you because both these doctors are absolutely incredible. But for number two, for me, is going to be Tom Baker. Tom Baker is probably the most iconic doctor in all of Doctor Who. He is so, so brilliant and spot on when he's playing the doctor. He was also the doctor for the longest time, as I'm sure everyone knows. And he had some of the absolute best stories in Doctor Who history. He had Genesis of the Daleks, which I really, really love. He has Logopolis, the spinal one, which was the first ever classic Who story that I ever saw. So that has a special place in my heart, and I do, I really do love it. City of Death is just, it's amazing. First one that they shot, obviously, uh, not in the UK. They shot in Paris in some parts. Invasion of Time, I think it's underrated. Amazing twist with the Santarans coming out. Leela exit at the end of that, though, was a little bit, nah, a bit rushed, it seemed. Well, of course it was rushed, but, you know. And The Hand of Fear as well, amazing story to send goodbye uh, to Sarah Jane Smith. Absolutely amazing, amazing. And the master design, of course, with the whole um, burnt look was just brilliant as well during his whole tenure. You really, you could hardly have gotten any better, really, with Tom Baker. It was so, it's so hard to get better than this. But in my opinion, someone was just a little, little bit better, which was David Tennant playing the 10th Doctor. There is not a single David Tennant story that I have not rewatched, and for good reason too, because pretty much all of them are absolutely perfect, except for a couple. I'm talking about a Series 2, Episode 7, in case you're not aware. The 10th Doctor had three companions. Rose was in Series 2 with him, which I think she got a lot more annoying than in Series 1, but she was still, she was still good. I think she was middle of the road in Series 2 with David Tennant. Martha, I think, was brilliant, a nice a bit of fresh air. She was, she was just so nice and kind, although she did have some kind of romantic interest in the Doctor, which I'm not too keen on with the companions. But yeah, she, she for me, was better than Rose in Series 2. But she was still a little bit wasted, I feel. But Donna in Series 4 was perfect to me. She's my absolute favourite companion in the new series. And I think second favourite of all time. Number one being Sarah Jane, of course. The only bad thing I can think about the 10th Doctor is at the end of time where he gives that rant about saying oh, I don't want to go and I did all this and this is my reward. I think that's the only bit that really lets the 10th Doctor down. But if you ignore all that and you, and you just skip past that, this Doctor is flawless in my opinion. And I absolutely, he's just, he's, he's, I love him. He, he's honestly my favourite Doctor ever and I love him so much as a doctor and I, and I can't wait to see more of him with the 14th doctor next year for the 60th anniversary they are just some of my opinions obviously you can disagree with me and free rights and all that I mean, unless you're like from Siberia or something you might not have I don't, it's a joke it's a joke all right it's a joke in the comments tell me your favorite and least favorite doctor as well i'm really curious to see what your least favorite is as well your favorite i think is probably gonna be either david Tennant or tom Bay. but i want to i want to see something freely wrong with that i want to see someone have an outrageous favorite doctor that'd be fun yeah thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you in a bit bye